uh, variant forks uh, and, and, and forks, uh, as you might know, are a very wide, impactful phenomenon in open source. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing what you have to say about that. Uh, John, floor is yours. Go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Chair. I'm going to present my work on reuse and maintenance practices among divergent forks in three software ecosystems. My name is John, and I'm working in the L'Oreal lab in the, at the University of Antwerp. So these are my collaborators. Uh, you can see that they are from different parts of the world and the universities, so it's basically a collaboration uh, from uh, different research groups. So this paper is a paper that is recently published. It's an MZ2021 uh, paper. And the site is there. Please uh, feel free to take a read. It's very interesting, and I'm sure I will I will interest you by the end of this talk more. Uh, with the rise of social coding website like GitHub, the rise of uh, reuse is also high. It's very popular, and uh, some of these uh, techniques that they use for reuse are through forking. The two types of forks we have the social forks. Our social forks are those forks that are created. For example, somebody has wants to introduce a new feature or make a bug fix, so they fork instead of uh, uh, fixing it directly into in the main branch. They fork and then create fix the create the new feature or fix the bug, and then after integrate it back into the main line. So these are this the end of the of, of integrating it the fork may die or maybe later may resurrect, but when the job is done, that is the end of the fork. And then we have another type of fork, which are the variant forks. So the variant forks, somebody sees a fork on GitHub, uh, sorry, a repository on GitHub with interesting um, features, and they don't want to start from scratch, so they decide to fork. So this becomes a variant of the mainline. So they develop a, a product which is in parallel with the mainline. So the, basically they develop in parallel with the mainline. So these are what we call variant forks. They're not really a social forks. They are variant forks. And these variant forks and the mainline may also have their own social forks, which do the bug fixing and future um, introduction. The variant forks optionally may integrate back into the mainline, but they are not intended to for this reason. They're intended to develop in parallel with the mainline. So our focus is on the variant fox or interest, and reason being that there is a lot of research has uh, happened in the social fox and very limited research in the variant fox. So our study is uh, a large-scale exploratory study on the use and maintenance practices on the variant fox based on three large ecosystems, the JavaScript ecosystem, programming language, Android, and then .NET programming language. So research questions. Our first research questions are, our first question is, what are the characteristics of software families in our ecosystems? Here we, are, we compare the software family, developer ownership, and popularity among the variants. Then research question two, how are the software families maintained and co-involved in our ecosystems? This is our main research question. And here we analyze code integration between the variants, considering different commit integration techniques that I'll be talking about in a few slides to come. So here I'm going to present collected our data. First, I will present how we collected the data from the Android families. To take an example, we have uh, our GitHub, a repo, which is, could, happens to be an Android repo. We, look, we identify that it's an Android repo using the keywords, searching it or, or on the maybe description, um, title or readme page of the, of the repository. And this repository, the mainline sub happens to be having five folks. Then to determine that this is the real Android application, for example, the mainline, we look it up on Google Play Store. And we find it on Google Play Store. If it exists, then we know that indeed this is a mainline application, a, an Android application. And then we look up the other folks of the mainline to see if they, there is any that exists on Google Play Store. 
So if you find it there, that means we know that this is these are real application. They are not just folks that were um, created for fixing bugs. They are real folks. And then these ones are what we call as variant folks. As you can see, this makes a family of of software systems, the mainline and two folks being developed in parallel. The other three remaining folks could possibly be social folks, but we are not sure since we've only looked at Google Play Store and maybe they are being uh, published somewhere else or maybe the user decided not to, to publish it anywhere and use it for their own use. So we managed to obtain 38 families comprising of a total of 54 mainline folk variant pairs. So the, the other things where we collected data is uh, JavaScript and uh, .NET programming languages and this is how we obtain the families so on github we uh we have two repositories repository a and repository b they are hosted on github and we know that uh repository a is repository b is a fork of of a and we're also able to determine that uh, these two repositories have published their packages on uh, either uh, Nugget or NPM, which are the distribution sites of um, uh, JavaScript and .NET applications. So here we know that uh, if this is true, then we know that the A and B are variants of each other. Luckily, we are able, to, unlike Android, we are able to get our data from uh, libraries.io. So we wrote a script to identify these variants and we're able to determine a number of them where those net will determine 526 families comprising of a total of 590 mainline folk variants and then in javascript we determined which was the largest 8807 comprising over 10,000 folk variant pairs so the results what are the characteristics of software families in our ecosystem so we managed to identify interesting results whereby uh, we discovered that most of the variants do not share common developers. As you can see the pie charts for the different ecosystems that we looked at, the majority are not common developers between variant, uh, between the variants after the fork date. So we managed to identify these common developers after the fork date. So we conclude that variants are mainly started and maintained by developers outside the core development team of the mainline, which is very interesting. So we thought it could be that it could be these variants are developed by, uh, for example, I'm, I'm developing my application and then I find out that I need to develop another application for another client. So I fork and create a variant of the, of the mainline. But this isn't the case. Those are very few cases where we didn't find that where we have common developers and then what are the characteristics uh, here we're looking looking at variant families we we got results we, we with their 38 families for example and then uh, 54 million for variant pairs here we have a graph a bar graph representing the distribution for example this bar graph number three uh, has six families and there are three variants in each of those families, one mainline and two variants. So as you can see that we have the majority of the variants uh, having very few numbers in the family and those which have many variants in the family are very rare. So .NET, these are the, we got similar results. This is a graph is on a logarithm scale. And then also on the, for JavaScript, we have a similar um, distribution. So we conclude that indeed the software families exist in different ecosystems. And this is very interesting because uh, there's a lot of research that can be done on these uh, software families. So the other research question is research question two, uh, which I already introduced. Now, first I would talk about the code integration, which is the key uh, of our research question two code integration techniques. So integration, we are looking at how the, the different variants integrate code. So we developed, there are two types of, there are two types, main types of integration. We have pull request integration, which has match pull requests or squash or reverse. 
So when you want to integrate your code from one branch to another using pull requests, you can either choose merging the commit, squashing where you squash all the commits uh, before before integrating them, and then the the target repository will receive only one commit, or you can reverse. And then we also have Git. This Git also has different methods. We have Git cherry picking. We have merge and then reverse. And then when integrating commits, the key things, for example, the commit has different uh, metadata. It has a commit ID, author name, author date, committer name, commit, committer date, and file details. Most of the studies that uh, have um, been carried out on code integration have not looked at squash, reverse, and cherry pick because this change the commit metadata. I'll be explaining it further here. So here we have um, uh, we developed a tool to, to be able to identify the different integration commits that are integrated from one branch to another. For example, using uh, pull request merge, when you integrate a commit from uh, one one branch to another, all the different metadata there is no change. So you can be able to see that the commit that is integrated using pull request merge in both branches is the same. The history is the same. And then one interesting one is uh, the interesting ones are squash, reverse, and cherry picking for Git. So these, as you can see, have changes in the commit, uh, commit ID and other metadata involved. So we use this information to develop our tool. And the tool can be found on the GitHub, our GitHub site. Please take a look. So most of the studies ignore the, the studies uh, that uh, change the commit metadata, like squash, rebase, and commit. But we took interest in looking at this in detail, and we have results. So here I present results for our search question two. This is a graph showing the box plots of uh, the pull request integration in different directions. For example, on the left hand side we have the fork to mainline, and then on the right hand side we have mainline to fork. So as you can see, the graphs, all of them, the box plots have median of zero. So meaning that there's very limited integration between the mainline and fork and fork, and then fork to mainline. We saw that we see the same uh, trend on the .NET, which has even more uh, uh, variants. So as you can see, we still have median of zero and then a few outliers. The same thing is happening with the largest, which is JavaScript. We all have we have very limited integration. When we go to results of the GitHub or Git, so we have Git cherry picking. We also see that uh, the, the integration is also very minimal, and likewise Git module base is minimal. So, in summary: We have code in, uh, propagation using pull requests is rarely used in all mainline fork variant pairs for the three ecosystems that we studied. So, Git merge and cherry pick integration techniques are also less frequently used, though from the graphs we see that Git merge is the most frequently used. Observation two, like the integration pull request. We, sorry, this slide is not supposed to be there. The summary overall in all the studied mainline fork variant pairs this in, of the three ecosystem, we observe infrequent code integration, regardless of the type of integration mechanism or direction. So the most frequently used is git merge sock rebase, which is outside GitHub. And then among the pull requests, we have git merge option is the most frequently used. Pull, and then pull request smash, uh, squash, and rebase are less frequently used. So this is very interesting because as, as we know from the social folks, the main reason is to create to fix bugs and then integrate back uh, back into the mainland. But for variant folks, this is not the case. They, we don't see this trend happening. There is less uh, frequent integration or sharing of code between mainline and variant. So in conclusion, we performed an exploratory study on the evolution of variants in a software family. We have identified a large number of variants. Interestingly, we have observed that folk variants are usually studied and maintained by developers outside the, uh, those of the mainline. This is very interesting because maybe uh, they could be fixing bugs and um, 
differently at uh, different times for especially for those files that that are shared between the two variant the variants interestingly also we have also observed that code integration between mainline and variants is very infrequent we provide lots of uh, implication for study and a number of ways in which the work can be extended i interest you to read our work uh, which is the, in the journal thank you for listening i'm happy to take your questions All right, indeed. Thanks a lot. Uh, very good work, uh, John. Very interesting. Very interesting work. I, I liked uh, your your take on uh, uh, on software families.